Hello. I hope everyone's doing well. Hello, Exile. Hello, Louie, and hello, Ringtail. Thank you for dropping in. And Chris, happy Sunday. Hello. Jupiter Spire. Oh my gosh, we're so busy this morning. Good morning, just dropping by to say hi and wish you a good stream. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day, Jupiter Spire. Good morning, Penguin Queen. How are you doing? How is everyone doing? It's Community Challenge Day. Yay! So, for anybody who doesn't know, um, in our small Discord community, we have a community challenge every month where we have a theme and we try to do art or writing or any sort of creative works along that theme. And today's theme is retro and i haven't done any isometric art on stream ever i don't think so I, i'm, I'm kind of getting into it recently so i'm gonna do some game boy mimics <laughs> i'm like you know what would be good some game boy mimics and then maybe we'll do some other consoles so i've got some examples of game boys that i have owned in my childhood I don't know if that ages me, <laughs> but it's true. These are the three Game Boys of my childhood. Sounds awesome. I hope so. We'll see how it goes because, like I said, I'm still kind of getting used to isometric stuff, but I figure we can, we can have a go. Dungeon Bemo. Dungeon Beamer. Yeah, kinda. Kind of. <laughs> but instead of, I guess, an adorable little thing, we're gonna we're gonna add tongues. <laughs> Make it a little bit creepy. It'll it'll still be cute, let's be real. I can't help it. Everything I do is cute. It's just who I am. <laughs> Just who I am. But we're gonna start off with um I think like the regular Game Boy, and the Game Boy Color is basically the same, just thinner, in my mind. You know, they just kind of went, we we liked the design, but what if it was what if it had a torch and was just half as thick? <laughs> so we'll do the Game Boy and then we might do the SP with that super flip. This was like the exact one that I had as well, this blue one. My brother, I think, had like a grey silver one with like tribal tattoos. <laughs> but I had a nice blue one. We had to share originally with the original Game Boy, but then when the SP came around, we both got one, which was nice. I think it was because at that point, my parents realised that we both wanted to play it because they considered it a very boy thing so we got one it was like you have to share with your sister but we got this mainly for you was effectively um it's effectively what happened when we got the game boy and then they realized that i wouldn't give it back <laughs> so so i had to uh they had to I had to make that fair. <laughs> Thank you for the look, Chris. Have a good rest of your day. I hope we provide good background noise for whatever it is you're doing. 
had a spread, um, oh, like a tealy Game Boy. Ooh, a spread, a uh, sort of, sort of, there we go. A sort of tealy Game Boy. Oh, that's cool. There, they came in so many colors. They still do. They still do. I do kind of appreciate that about all of the Nintendo consoles, if I'm honest. Just a amount of colours. It's always very fun. I still have a Game Boy Advance. See, I, I only have the SP, but I do have them. I have them locked away. I've got, like, effectively my own little museum. So this needs to be a bit wider, I think. Let's go. Let's go. And also... Ooh, not all of it down. Because that's not that's not gonna fit anything in. Right. That looks a bit more like the side, and then we'll figure out how to round off the corner in a bit. But right now I've just got my box. And I might make that a bit bigger as well so that I can center the screen with the size like because the screen would look nice as a 3x3 three three, I think I guess that is centered yeah I have my own little my own little library still where I have the Game Boy and the SP Game Boy Color got lost to time unfortunately and then I've got my DS I think as well and my 3DS. And now I have my Switch. Because I do love the Nintendo consoles. <laughs> There's just something about a portable console. Okay. So what I might do... Because obviously I've made these this grid quite big. I'm going to make the X over here and then I'm going to scale it down and put it into position because then I know it's at least proportionate. Like so. Okay, how big do we want it? Do we want to fit it in like one of these maybe? It's like a top and bottom thing. Also, did that... Was that not lined up when I shrank it? Shame on me, if that is so. Yeah, it looks like it was slightly off. It's okay. We can fix it. There we go. We want that to look a little bit 3D, so we'll have it poking out just a tad. Ah, oh. but how is everybody else doing? Also, feel free to take this time to, you know, do something with me along the theme, the retro theme. That's a good point. I forgot to add the co-working tag to the stream. Let's add it now. Co working. There we go. Add it. Because I know sometimes it can be hard to think about perhaps what to do for well, the challenges, or maybe you don't have time. It's fine if you don't have time. But just in case you need, you know, just to think about it and stuff. We're all here right now. Chat is a good place to, to bounce ideas around, I think. I'm not sure if that's the right angle, actually. This looks off. Yeah, it should be down. It should be down. I don't know why I went up. There we go. That's, that's better. Yeah. 
You're right, Exile. I just looked at chat and saw that you told me the exact thing that I was just saying. <laughs> this is too far down because I'll need to follow the the grid there we go that looks better no that's not aligned there we go memories of isometric drawing and early engineering class ah yeah that makes sense Seems like the place for it. It's a thing that I guess I'm only really starting to delve into and haven't really done a huge amount of, but I do find it quite fun. Kind of working with the grid. There we go, that looks nicer. take the line down a bit. I mean, we can always turn the grid off and on whenever we want to have a look at things. I think I'm going to want to extend the screen out, but we're going to go slow. And then we need to mimic fire, obviously. So what I think could be cool is if the A and B buttons are eyes. I think that would be cute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a circle. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put a center point like on the X here. And then I'm going to use the free transform to try and get that angle. So I want this side at the top, this side at the top. No, that would be weird. <laughs> I want it to fit. I guess I want it to fit in here. So I guess I want this. Do I want this? Okay, well, I think I kind of want this. If I've got it the wrong way, I can flip it. Looks very similar to my starting point. Let's just make sure. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. And if it's not too different, then it's not too different. We're good. Yeah. It's not too different, but that's fine. We will reflect it over though. The way you're just drawing straight lines could set um, you could set isometric grid on. It helps if you also have a vertical guideline. That way you can sort of see the face. Of yeah, that is true. Maybe next time, or maybe maybe during the break, I'll reset the grid. I will have the vertical face as well. So I don't want to just move this back slightly, I think. Give it a little scale. where it is but it doesn't it's not necessarily on that exact diagonal I think it's more like here yeah sorry if it feels like I'm backseat tweaking just trying to no it's okay all is good I appreciate the assistance since this is a thing I'm learning I just so, because I drew the grid and I've started, I don't want to reset it for this one. <laughs> but for another console, that's a good shout, I think. 
resetting it to having those details would be a good idea. So what I might do is I might just bring these out like this because this is where the edges of the screen look like they go They're quite far over yeah, that one doesn't look like it was as straight as it should be yeah I'm missing the marks there we go I was like that doesn't look like it's actually aligned properly And then they've all got like a curve a little bit, but the bottom corner has especially got a curve. So we'll just add a little bit there and we'll give this one like a big one, like that. And then we can put the square back in. I'm going to use the guide. And then we'll shrink this into place. So then my angle is all on, so at least it should be. I have been missing the mark a few times. <laughs> For the Game Boy Advance, you could make the two sides like the mouth. Yeah, I'm wondering. So, what I'm thinking for this is I want the eyes to be here. And then maybe, maybe like a tongue coming out of the top where the cartridge would be. I think that would be fun. Actually, I think I want to do the sides. I want to bring the sides in first because I'll need that edge to line things up. Because this I can just hold shift to bring it down. There we go. I think that's better. Yeah, it's like a very, it's quite small. It is a very small screen. <laughs> I do like looking at old computers and stuff because there's so much machine for like the little, the teeny, teeny, tiny screen or graphic that you have going on. It's, it's just quite fascinating how much was ne needed back in the day. Let's give this a little shrink. Boop. Little dot. Okay, and now I need to round this this corner, which is going to be an interesting challenge. I'm curious if I could just do that and then have the line come out flatter. So I feel like this and this should probably be rounded at a similar level. And if I just bring, I guess, this up, I mean, it wouldn't be up here, it'd be more here. Bring it in line. Almost. Almost. It's just like there's a little bit of the line there, isn't there? 
just need to move it a teeny, teeny, tiny bit. Oh, I forgot to grab this bit. There we go. I'm going to just move it out of the way so I can shrink it back so it's flush. There we go. Okay, that wasn't too bad, I think. It's not quite... Mm, I think it's because this needs to be rounder, right? Oh, yeah, I turned my guides off. It's all on the same layer. It's almost... It's almost there. It looks a little bit off. Why are you off? Why are you no look... Is it because of this? Is it, is it that this should be slightly curved? No, that would be weird. Oh, I think it's because this should be the bit. Like, there shouldn't be a separate line, maybe. Maybe it should do this. I think that was the problem. And I can get rid of that line, because I've just got this one shape. Yeah, okay, cool. That looks a bit better. A nice rounded corner. I know they're all a bit rounded, though. I need my guides back. But it's like they had this, this like bottom corner. This bottom right corner was like a little bit more round. <laughs> Which is an interesting... An interesting design choice. And I think I'm going to put this line down the middle. I'm give it a thinner line. And I need to put the start and select on there, which again are interesting just because they're at a different angle. I also just like looking at the evolution because I know there was the normal advance in between this one. But I just like how the buttons became rounder, they got closer together. They've still got the angle on this though. And the screen took forever to be big on this console. <laughs> to be fair, I don't know if you can call a screen on an, a, a portable Nintendo console ever big. They've always been quite traditionally low res. Okay. So I'm gonna make this. And then I'm gonna move this up. Try and match the top and the bottom angle. Highest res for childhood. I know. <laughs> I was like, look at these graphics, they're so amazing. <laughs> I've always thought that like Nintendo consoles have always kind of sacrificed graphical fidelity for innovation. Like their consoles usually try a lot of things. And if that thing's successful, then the other the other consoles take it as well. But it we may not have it if Nintendo didn't attempt attempt such bold things, you know. Okay. Now, I don't know if I did want this at this angle because now I'm thinking I need to rotate it, and I'm like, hmm, is that gonna work? It might. It's such a weird angle. It's such a weird angle. Uh, it's like in the middle, so I might have to shrink everything down or make the console bigger. Kind of like here. I don't mind if it's not like an exact replica. It is a mimic. 
<laughs> Maybe the Mimic's made a few mistakes. It's not made itself big enough. I'll try making it slightly bigger. You can turn a Game Boy into a smoke machine if you operate it wrong wrong enough. <laughs> Surely that's the case with with any electrical equipment. Okay. Do I want to make this bigger? I might want to make it a tad thinner. But... I, I kind of like the way it's leaning in, even though it may not be the most accurate. I think I like the way this is looking. So I'm just going to grab my points here. I'm thinking like one and a half of these is actually what I want. And then we'll bring this in as well. To about three quarters. Yeah, that looks a bit better. A bit more what I want. And then I've got to have room for this, the console bit. That's where we'll put the tongue. <laughs> so we definitely get the retro part. Now now I need to mimic it, mimic fire it somehow. Eyes first, I mean obviously. Obviously we're doing this. So I do want to have like, I feel like this needs a bit of a, an edge just to help it look like it's connected. I don't want it to look like an eyebrow though. Just needs like a sharp edge on this, on this bit, just like a little bit. Like filling in the space. Oh, nope. Eyes. <laughs> Maybe it's like looking up at the screen. I don't know. I don't know where it should be looking. It'd be nice if we can do some pixel art teeth to put on the screen. I might attempt this. <laughs> what happens if you try to play a game on the game mimic i think you get bit <laughs> traditionally you get bit so i think i want it to look a little bit like a i want i want to like make it look a little bit like a thing what is it? A cartridge. There we go. I was struggling there. Okay. There we got this. We got this. We'll put this over here. Make sure that's properly lined up because it is not. Mm. 
There we go. points on so I'm putting them just a jar and then moving them back so that, that the lines don't connect where I don't want them to okay so I don't need this back one anymore this is like slightly a jar there we go I need to finish the shape. Finish the shape. There we go. The cartridge could be the reason the teeth are on the screen. The teeth game. I'm definitely going to make the cartridge a tongue. That I have decided. I'm just trying to get the angle on it. I feel like it should just be... A, it, it, it doesn't quite stick out this far. I don't think. I don't can't see it from my reference. I need a new reference. Let me see what the cartridge looks like. That's the thing with the old Game Boys. It's hard to say because very rarely <laughs> do you see the back of it. Though I don't know if the cartridge stuck out. It's only if you like had the game poking out. I don't think it was like constantly sticking out I think it was quite flush yeah there's the back so it wasn't quite at the halfway mark so if I group this need to move those angles back. Oh, I'm going to need the grid again. Just like that. Which I don't even think of any that if I'm just doing that. These should probably have the thicker lines. Okay. How do I turn this into a tongue? <laughs> Part of me wants to just kind of use it as a guide so that I can maybe, I don't know, take like a midpoint in it or something. Pull that up. Yeah, there's more than one shape going on there. That's fine.
then I kind of went around it. I might want to redraw it so that I can give it a bit more of a, a floppy nature. Let's turn the opacity down and lock it because it's now a guide. This should also match the angle, right? I think that's probably what we want to do. Does that stop? <laughs> Why do you stop there? Usually it only stops when it's at a point. Give this tongue some depth. At the moment I'm kind of just experimenting with shapes. I'm not entirely sure where I'm gonna end up with this. <laughs> Kind of new territory. Lep. <laughs> Hello, Roll. How are you doing? You've come in as I've drawn this. Well, I'm halfway through trying to figure out this tongue, this cartridge tongue. <laughs> I'm good. I'm making a um, a mimic Game Boy for the Discord community challenge theme this month. This month it's retro. Anyone is free to go into the Discord and make um, some art or writing or whatever it is that is with the theme. It's just about creative prompts. So we've got a wonderful, wonderful Game Boy mimic. I want to have the tongue be the cartridge. I feel like I feel like it's pretty good so far. <laughs> Getting there with the shape. I think this might also be a guide but it's a good it's like a good shape now like I don't know if I, I want this angle I guess because it needs to look like it's fitting in the cartridge but I don't want this extra line up here so I might freehand it a bit to get like a wiggle on it or something if I can get a wiggle on it that would be nice that. I don't 
think I don't think that side necessarily needs it. I don't know. Maybe the thing is it needs to come from this point, doesn't it? That's what's weird. Like that. Like that, maybe? Best type of mimic? All types of mimics are the best types of mimics. <laughs> All mimics are good. Okay. And then, oh no, I don't want to lock it to this one. There we go. I do want this square shape at the bottom though, because I want it to look like it's coming out of the, the console bit. It is looking more like a tongue. That's something. That is something at least. And around it. Part of me wants to round it, part of me doesn't. Part of me just thinks I should have like a line coming out like it's hinting that it's kind of crammed in there. It does have good blep energy now, <laughs> which is what I wanted. That's a mighty blep. It's huge. <laughs> Considering how this, you know, stood so flush. I like it though. We've got some nice blep energy. I don't know if I want to add limbs or something, but I'm I'm digging it now. It, it's looking in the Looking, looking good. I want to add some teeth. Gosh, how would I do some pixel art fangs? I guess by drawing some squares. Let's do it straight on and then we'll use an angle. So if I get myself some squares. Thinking I want like fangs. That maybe. Hang on, that doesn't look right. That doesn't look right. There we go. of a space. Let's get a lot of the squares along here. I don't know if I want this one. That looks a bit too much like a space invader. I mean, I don't need a tongue. Maybe I just want pixel fangs, you know? Maybe this is too complicated. How about instead... It's just some jagged lines. Should 
be enough. And then I group them all together. Let's move you away. I like that, and then maybe we leave it to the colouring of the screen to hopefully make that obvious. <laughs> Wondering if the eyes, um, for the eyes, the pupils would benefit being slightly long longer like Mimitbot, like cat-like. find them looking at slightly more sinister. The cat-like thing. I can definitely try that. Give them a long boy. <laughs> I do like that. I think let's make it so they're still looking up. Slightly sinister. Slightly cat-like. I do like my mimics to have a kind of cat-like quality to them. I do feel like that adds that adds a bit for me. Okay, so we want this to be a lot smaller. Oh no, we don't want to do that. We don't want to move the rest of this. Okay. I'm going to sort out my layers. I'm going to lock some things. I'm going to group some things. Let's group the tongue bits together. And then I think everything else here. Let's group that in so I can lock it. Get the guides back on. So I want to make this go along this angle, basically. Come in, come right in. We want this corner on that point. And I'm going to just grab the free transform tool and grab all of this up here. I'm going to eyeball this. I'm sure there's a more accurate way of doing it, but I'm going to eyeball it. That should be the right angle now. Put some teeth. Could have them a bit longer. Yum, yum, yum. Across the screen. In fact, I think I could probably reflect it from here. Or can I? No. That's a fool's errand. That's a fool's dream. That's okay. We'll just do the same thing again. I'll put the bottom corner in line with our grid. Then I'm just going to free transform up to the same line. Well, actually, I should have done the other line, but oh well. It's fine. It'll work out, I think. That's slightly too big. a bit better. I'll go with that. Nom nom nom. Pixel monster teeth. And then I need to grab this screen and use it as a clipping mat. And then we just see how we feel. <laughs> I think it's kind of working. I think colour will help. Though I'm not entirely sure it will be obvious. What do other people think? I mean, we're adding, when I say adding colour, we're adding different shades of green. <laughs> because the Game Boy doesn't have a lot of colour. 
part of me feels like I should add something else. Yeah, I think the colour will help. Like, I feel like I want to add a limb of some kind. I don't know if I want to just have arms out the sides. Maybe. Just, like, coming out. Because there isn't any buttons on the side, is there? Well, I guess there is. There's these turny, turny things. Like the volume control. So it could be coming out of there. Or a charger tail. I don't know how I would... Yeah, like, I like I like the idea of something coming out of here, but I just composition-wise, I like... I think I want to leave it on this one, but other ones where the, the charger's in a different place. That could work a bit better. I kind of just want to give it arms. <laughs> You're right, yeah, this is a headphone jack. <laughs> it didn't have a charger. It's because I see the hole and I think, that's a charge hole, but it's not, it's a headphone jack. That is a silly me. Okay, well... Let's... I kind of just want like a line like this. Coming out of the of the of the machine. No, I don't really want the end. I don't know if I want the ends to be round. I can do something else with them. like you know it's cast your mind back if you if you know if you do if you know to Wallace and Gromit a grand day out <laughs> that's where my brain is at that's what I'm thinking those are the arms that I want um let's see let's look at that that's what I'm thinking I'm like what is my brain doing it's it's thinking of that robot <laughs> the sassy robot that it is. Let's see, let's get it in our references. Here it is. Let's turn the grid off. This friend. <laughs> That's the arms I'm thinking of. Let's do those. I don't know where I'm putting this one. Let's put it on this side over there please that's what I'm thinking of so I want this to be more of an even I'm gonna make it even again I do love Wallace and Gromit. It's so wholesome. Okay, so I'm going to want some circles for joints. scale it down uh, to yeah, about 80% I think oh no not like that
and then I'll line this up properly and we'll do some like a hatch or something. Because right now I'm kind of just working it with the grid. I'll need to move it up. And then he's got these gloves. These weird gloves going on. Which I feel like is more more of a freehand job. holding my hand like this, my thumb is on the inside of my hand, so it'll be on the side closest to the body. I know, I feel like I need to draw it the other way around. There's like a thumb. It's kind of like that. Let's neaten this up. Wasn't expecting to do any free handing, but I don't think I was expecting to give it arms, so. <laughs> Work this, make it a bit more even. I know it's quite rare for me to give my mimics any appendages. I usually just give them tongues. <laughs> and I'm like, that's fine. They can use their tongues as arms. But this lucky mimic, this lucky mimic gets hands. Such a small hand, though. I might wanna. Boop! Big hand. Bigger hand now. <laughs> I need the grid necessarily, but I kind of want it to match where the wheels are, so it's kind of like maybe a tiny bit lower. Kind of like here. That's where I think it should be. No, uh, is it in the middle? No, it's kind of like at the back, so. Gotta move it back here. That's where it should be. It's not quite on my grid. I do have snap on. I don't know why snap isn't snapping as much as it should be. Thank you. 
go could just bring the opacity down. Maybe it's like like a like a little like a secret hole where the where the where the arms come out. <laughs> That might be a bit too much. I think I want it to be darker. Then, thinking we could have like a slidey flap on either side. It's like the doors. housing it. This one should be on top. I can bring that in to make it look like it's properly in there then. Nice! <laughs> I have an arm! I just realised I got so carried away. I have... I'm past, I'm past break time. We'll put another arm on this thing. Think after the break, and then I'm I'm happy I'm I'm happy to do some coloring because I'm happy it looks sufficiently mimic esque. <laughs> like I might do something else with the buttons. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Maybe the eyes will be looking somewhere else. But I like the tongue. The tongue has the tongue has come out well. It's it's a silly little goof, this thing. Okie dokie. Well, in the meantime... I'm gonna just come in. If you need a stretch, or if you need a drink, or if you need to do anything else to take care of yourself, it's a good time to do that, because I'm gonna go on a 10 minute break. So I will see you all in 10 minutes time.
hope everybody else had a good break. I had a piece of fruit and I've made a tea, so I'm ready to continue. I need to add another arm. I need to add another arm to the mimic. So I'm gonna I'm gonna duplicate this arm. I know I've got a lot of things to change though, because I need to effectively flip the angle. But at least if I start with this, I start with all the parts, so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna just grab the circle so it's two. The circle needs to sit in the center. And it's two down as well, so here. Then I can grab the points. Move them over. So I've gotten the angle right. And then I have to redraw the hand from the other side. So I'm gonna just duplicate this hand and use it as a reference to try and just make sure that the scale is correct because obviously it's the other hand, so I don't want to give it two left hands. <laughs> That'll look a bit strange. So I don't think I need the grid. I don't think I need the grid. That's fine. Give this a bit of a lock. What I will do though is I will copy the curved line at the top. Because there's no reason that that needs to change. That'll help with the consistency, I think. So we've got a thumb that we need to consider. of them should fall into place hopefully. I'm not sure about that thumb. Hmm. I might try that again. I'm almost there now. I just need to fiddle around with all the shapes. Don't want the arm though. Just want to select these bits. Just under 
this line. That needs to go here, I think. That'll be where it's lined up. And then obviously we want to put this one on the back. But I don't have any fill on the Game Boy yet. There we go. Actually, yeah, it would need to be in a lot more because it needs to line up with this line. Oh, no, wrong one. So it'll need to come... It'll be just here. That's where it should be, I think. Out there. Which I think is looking good. I'm gonna just give this some lines on the gloves there. Looking great, thank you. I, I do like it. <laughs> it's an interesting little, interesting little scamp, I think. I'm gonna think about the color now. I don't know how much I want to shade everything, but I do want to give it at least a base color. But yeah, Met Pet Mimic Bot answers, asked a question. How do you deal with a series of bad dice rolls? Roll is responding uh, with humor, because there's nothing I can do. My friend's always as bad as me. <laughs> it's true, bad dice rolls are contagious. I wonder if it's the game Mimic or the Mimic Boy. I quite like the Mimic Boy. <laughs> that suits the way I talk. Actually, I don't want to do that. I want to bring this in, don't I? There's no point in having two things. start off with this screen. I might go with slightly less traditional Game Boy colours or like maybe just a bit brighter like I might go with my green instead of the Oth green just because it's nice and bright. I still haven't added it to my colour palette annoyingly but there's a dark green that I need to add that I've been using for some portraits and stuff. So I need to open that portrait to get that dark green. Where is that portrait? There we go. This dark green that I used on this old lady portrait. I like it and I need to add it to my colour palette permanently. It's just such a thing in, in Illustrator. I can't just drag it into my palette. I have to like save over it and it's very annoying. I wish there was an easier way to update it, but there we go. I've got that screen, and I do want it to look like teeth, so we are going to at least... I think we'll make this white. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the teeth layer so that if I, anything goes wrong, I've got it as is. I shouldn't have done 
much in the case of merging. Yeah. So I've got this layer and then I'm going to make it a compound path so that it's all just one layer. And then I can group the screen and the layer and hopefully then after doing all those things I can make this a fill. I can put the white on the top and the bottom. Oh but it's done something weird to the sides of my lines so I will do that but what I will do instead is I'm going to just copy the screen take the fill off of it so that I've got the lines separate. So it's just the colour I'm making into a fill object and that way my lines shouldn't do anything odd. Yay! Oh, no, go back where you were. Want this? Let's make this red. Put this on. I might give it like a yellow colour. Maybe we'll go with our light purple, because that's more reminiscent of the grey. Or maybe green, because I'm I kinda like the idea of everything being in the green lines. I don't have as many shades of green. takes us. Actually, I don't want this to be dark. The top shouldn't be darker. extra lines here. And the eyes. I could have them like a bright colour. That could be interesting. Probably want a bit more contrast though. change up the colours so we don't have any awkward things happen in there. Of 
quite like the yellow, so maybe not orange. Maybe purple. teal and green so maybe I'm gonna put that in there oh I don't know if it yeah nah it's, I'm not sure maybe if the green was worked in somewhere else There's room for it, I just need to make it a bit more consistent. shouldn't have a fill. Yeah. Let's come in here. think about this color scheme I like it I think I need to add something to the screen though to make it look a bit more like a screen it needs like a reflection or something I'll add some some goo to the tongue <laughs> well, there's still a line here isn't there yeah this is what's weird this needs to be that there we go some things to the maybe I could have A and B in the eyes actually that could be fun but if I just get a my brush okay, A is this side right <laughs> put them on the wrong side I think no it's the other way B yeah B is the first one okay cool I'm glad I checked <laughs> I like that. But I think it needs a highlight as well, so that it's a bit more like... These are definitely eyes. Maybe 
maybe we'll go with a classic gradient. like a little highlight just down here actually I think that needs to be up here and I might even go darker purple for the pupils gonna see what it looks like if I've made it the green. I kind of feel like it'd be nice to try and fit the purple in somewhere else if I'm gonna use it. Maybe like in the shade. Just helps having it in more than one place because otherwise it looks a little bit like the color shouldn't be there so i think i'm gonna go back to this because it just hits a bit nicer there maybe instead of an orange gradient we want a lighter yellow gradient Swap the colors so the highlight's still visible. Yeah, that doesn't look as harsh anymore. I just want to keep adding more highlights to these eyes. Like, I'm not done yet. I need something else. these need a gradient maybe that's what I'm missing as well so this one should be a bit further up Mimic Bot has asked another question what is your favorite tabletop RPG or video game and why my favorite tabletop RPG changes a lot 
because I play a lot of them. What is my favourite one right now? Actually, I want that the other way. In this particular moment, my favourite tabletop RPG... Yeah, that gradient. That gradient does a lot. Is... Monster of the Week. <laughs> because it's um, very collaborative and fun. And I like the style of it. Welcome back, Chris. How has your day been going? made some good progress on our little mimic friend. I actually think that maybe I should stick with the isometric angle. There we go. That's the angle we want. We've got a little, some little shine lines, and then what I'm also gonna do. Thank you. Yeah, a Nintendroid. <laughs> it's got a little tongue for the cartridge, which I'm a, a fan of. I need. Where is my cartridge? Oh, I have so many layers. It's in here, I think, isn't it? Not the cartridge, the screen. There it is. What I want to do is I want to add a gradient to the screen. Uh, but I want this to be like a light gradient. We'll use the yellow. And this one is no opacity. Oh, I want it the other way around. Add a screen mode effect so it looks like it's very shiny. And that should help. That should help make the screen just look a bit more. Yeah, a little less flat. Like there's something on this screen. Day is good. Been doing some doodling myself with certain enthusiastic tabaxi. Ooh, nice. I shall have to check the Instagrams or wherever it is, wherever it is you're posting. I always assume the Instagrams. It's usually a good place. Okay, we need some detail on this tongue. We need to make it slimy. Because it's not a tongue if it's not slimy. <laughs> Just some little dots. And you know what? I think it needs a gradient as well. But not the see through one. The see through gradient is not what we need. I think we want two shades of green. the lighter one. Just really a really subtle gradient. The Instagrams is easiest, I think. The Burb app moves very quick and does weird things these days. Yeah, I don't like the Burb app anymore. I definitely have a I don't want to play with you anymore vibe with it. Um, uh, or maybe I will just leave it plain. Or maybe I'll do this in a different way. 
I feel like everything else is so clean. I need to try and do it in a more clean way. I also feel like just so many people have left the bird app that I don't I don't have nearly as much engagement. I know like it's doing other weird things with its algorithm. Um which is unfortunate because I got that was where I got a lot of my interaction um from like commissions and and store stuff it was mostly from the bird app and uh i've definitely noticed a lack of that which you know it could be other things too because there's a lot of things going on in the world right now but uh i have noticed like a, a, a pretty epic drop off since things went a bit crazy over there um I'm... It all seems to do. Um, all it seems to do is help the emperor convince his lackeys he has new clothes on. Yeah, exactly. Um, the other observation I feel like I've made is that it just feels like there's a lot of creators, but very few people who would, you know, like consumers, if that makes sense. Like, obviously, creators support other creators most of the time most of the creators i know but when it's when it's a market of just creators um it just feels weird you know like it feels very devoid of life right now um to the point where i'm I, i'm not really sure how long i'm gonna keep it up i'm keeping it up for the time being but i'm not really spending any time on it kind of just go post my stuff and then leave which I think that's what other people are doing too which means nobody sees your stuff <laughs> I only ever see posts from the bird app through discord like if people post post their their, their bird app posts and uh, like in a, in a discord server and be like can you help me boost that tends to be where I find all of those things to boost but otherwise um I don't I just don't like to spend time on it. But it's okay, it's a shame, yeah. Oh, this looks better. This looks better. It's a shame, but I'm, you know, I'm just trying to think of, okay, so where else can I go now? This is obviously I need to go somewhere else. I've always been on Tumblr. <laughs> but click-throughs on Tumblr is quite a, a hard thing. MySpace. Ah, yes, that's the place. <laughs> I hear it's happening over there. Um, I do like... I do like Mastodon. But, again, it's a little bit like Tumblr in the way of uh, engagement. Uh, yeah. Uh, Instagram. Hit and miss sort of thing. Uh, I've... I'm kind of intrigued about YouTube. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it has a lot of social elements as well. And I do want to try and do some live streaming on it. So I'm actually very intrigued about YouTube. I'm uh, trying to see how that can go. Oh my gosh. What do we think, everybody? I think, I think it's done. <laughs> I love it. Well, the first one. We'll do another one. I don't know, because I was going to do a... I've got a few references of Nintendo machines. I was going to do Game Boy Advance, but I'm kind of thinking I should do like a PS... PS1 or something. Because that was another console from my childhood that I just love. So I'm going to move this into the... I'm going to move it into the center. He's a beautiful, it is, he is a beautiful boy. The Mimic boy. <laughs> there we go. Our first, our first entry for the community challenge this month. I always say entry, there's no prize or anything. It's just prompts to inspire. That's what the challenge is all about. We just drop a theme. 
people do some things. Put a nice yellow background in there. There we go. I'm happy with that. Pop him in the middle of the screen for everyone so he can shine. Yeah, the teeth are very subtle, but I do think they it does look like a mouth. I do think the screen does look like a mouth. It's just weird because the tongue isn't in it. <laughs> like the tongue is on top. But um, I, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the colours as well, actually. We're keeping it very simple. There's like the bare minimum of shading here. And the eyes have got quite a bit of a shine. Okay. it's And that's convenient because it's, it's, it's 12 o'clock. So it's a good time for a break. Things that can turn into other things should be able to have tongues wherever they need them, exactly. I always I always feel like tongues are kind of like just another appendage for mimics. Like usually my mimics don't have arms. They just have tongues. So I imagine that this tongue kind of helps shove whatever its target is into its screen mouth. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Things become pixelated before they get eaten. You, like, get taken to the pixel world. And you're slowly digested. And you have to try and get out of it. <laughs> there's my there's my Game Boy Mimic adventure pitch right there. Folks, feel free to use that. <laughs> Is it a tongue or a tongue-shaped pseudopod? Ooh. That's a good question. Is it just like a, another friend on top of the mimic friend? <laughs> okay. Yes, I need I need to go get a refill of drinks and stuff. So, if you need a drink, or if you need a stretch, or if you need to do anything else to take care of yourself, it's a good time to do that because I'm going to be gone for a whole ten minutes. So I'll see everyone back here in ten.
Hello! I am back from my break. I have a new tea and a new console. <laughs> I think doing something with a disc that can that can make things a little bit more interesting. So I've drawn a new grid. I've got the vertical line this time as per Exile's suggestion. And I'm going to have a think. So there is a few things we can do with the PlayStation because it's got a few more things going on with it. We could do something with this disc flap. We've got some circular buttons. I can add a controller if I want, but what I'm thinking what might be nice is just having like the wires come out like hands from the, the controller ports. Or maybe even just like one of the random attachments that you could get. <laughs> Though I feel like that may... There was a few attachments for the PlayStation 1. It really started getting a bit more crazy for the PlayStation 2, I think. But I think I just want to have some wires. Maybe, maybe we'll have hands or appendages that way. Maybe I want to pop the disk drive up to um, have something. So I'm... I'm thinking that these three buttons can all be eyes so we've got three eyes and that maybe we've got like some sort of tongue situation inside here <laughs> maybe we've got some teeth around the rim i'm gonna need to find a reference now of this lid popped open because i need to figure out that angle i mean it's going to be on a isometric grid circles on an isometric grid may not be the the easiest thing anyway but we'll give it a good shot um let's see if i can find myself reference there we go that looks like a good a good enough reference let's get that in the document paste that in nice I'm gonna oh do I want to flip it because I always like drawing things at the angle we drew this friend but maybe I should go the other way since that's what my reference is just for the sake of not confusing myself I think I think this let's go the other way why not do you find that when you draw audience <laughs> <laughs> no one in particular. Any artists out there, do you find that you lean towards drawing things in a certain direction? I Like, for instance, all of my portraits, they are always facing this way. I've only ever done one that isn't, and it's because I had a set of twins, and I wanted one facing the other way. Otherwise, they're all facing that direction. Which is weird, because that's right, and you'd think I'd have a consistent right thing going on, but then... My isometric stuff seems to lean to the left. Okay. So... I've gone for how many? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've gone five by eight. Do I feel like that's a good representation? I think it could work, but then I'm thinking about how I want to fit things in. Uh, might go a bit bigger. Might go six by ten. I always end up drawing isometric stuff like on the side and then moving it back later. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do I need ten? Maybe not. Maybe the eight will be good. And it is. I wouldn't say the PlayStation One is is that chunky. I might do two. Like, because the PlayStation was never that small you know it wasn't portable so it wasn't as uh notable and I, if anything it's gotten bigger over the years do i want 
two, no, two is not, two is too much. One, one could work. And then they're right in the middle. So it's kind of like, so that would be even. Turn the grid off. That would be where the memory card slots are. And then that also helps line up where the disc circle is. Because it's just a bit wider. So... I don't really know how... to go about putting a circle in here. What I might do is put a square and then round it off and see how that works. Because <laughs> the buttons on this one, it was so small I didn't mind too much, but this does feel like it needs to be properly integrated. So it's quite on the edge, so let's go straight from the edge. Unfortunately, it'll be in, in the middle there, so we might have to line things up in a weird way. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we do want that. And then is it... It is about the same distance from the back as well. So this one, about here. So we do want it to fit in this. I can line the handles up and I'm hoping that that will make something somewhat of what I want but do you know what I'm gonna also do I'm gonna change the color of this layer because that's quite hard to see there we are I'm gonna make things a bit easier on myself Okay, so yeah, that does, we have got a nice, it's not, it's, it's oval shape. It does need to be more circular, I've gone way too out, that's why it's oval. Because I'm silly. I don't know why I did the entire width. <laughs> it should be, honestly, here, I think. So, if this line is this. in line with this one should be about halfway and the same with this one there we go already that looks like a better shape just need to bring that in slightly looks better and then it just needs to be slightly smaller because there's a little bit at the front and the back so can bring it in in fact if I just bring it in so those points here hit the points then I think we're laughing just want to neaten it up ever so slightly like we're almost there I just feel like it could be a slightly more circular Mimic but asked another question. 
How old were you when you started playing tabletop games? 12. Oh my gosh. I was in university. I had to have been about 20. 2021, let's say. It was around that time. I had heard of them long beforehand, but I didn't actually get to play them until until then. I think I think that's what I want. I'm gonna hit save so I don't lose that circle. And then I want I want it standing up been in and out of the hobby for three decades now oh my gosh so that i'd be it would be like a solid decade for me <laughs> i joined and i did not leave i have very solidly been playing tabletop rpgs for the last 12 years i'm gonna have a sip of tea So I started with 4th edition. I started with D&D 4th edition. Um, which is an interesting place to start. <laughs> I think, looking back. 4th edition has its quirks. There's things I like about it. There's things that make it a little bit unplayable. Um, the thing that I like the most about it is the way that the books are laid out. There were so many monster manuals and so many books. Um, probably because Wizards was trying to just get people to play the darn thing. <laughs> um, you skipped fourth. That doesn't surprise me. A lot of people did. Started on AD&D 2nd Edition. Yeah. 4th Edition, it has a bad rap. I don't think it's quite as bad as... It, it's kind of got a reputation for but I wouldn't go back if you started on 5th edition I don't think you need to go back and play it if you know what I mean like I will play it possibly again if it was someone's edition of choice but it's um not my favourite 5th edition came along and I was like oh my gosh this is way better but within like the first couple of months um, and I feel like this is what led to my quite diverse interest in tabletop games. Within the first couple of months, I had played 4th um, edition D&D, 1st uh, edition Dark Heresy, and a homebrew Pokemon tabletop RPG. <laughs> um, which was the, the thing, the Pokemon game was my first ever GMing stint. Um, because I don't like to do things easy, so instead of finding a nice game that I could have a lot of help with, I just decided to GM a game that was completely homebrewed and I couldn't have any help with, and I just kind of made a lot of stuff up as I went along. <laughs> um, and yeah, I didn't. it wasn't a homebrew from me exactly, it was like something rolling around on the internet at the time. There's been a few other Pokemon tabletop RPGs in more recent years that look a lot better. Um, this one was definitely quite broken. We did have to fix the HP system almost immediately. Uh, and it didn't help that I made a lot of decisions that did not help me. <laughs> like saying, you can have as many Pokemon out as, as you want at one time. Let's not worry about the turn order. Let's not worry about the fact that one round of combat in the system is going to take two hours. <laughs> I love that Pokemon game, even though the HP was super broken. Yes, I loved it. Don't get me wrong. I learned a lot. I learned important lessons about session zero and um, asking people about their boundaries. <laughs> um, because we all had a slightly different idea of what, like, I guess, dystopian future meant. Um, and then, you know... It was it was interesting. I went a bit too far on the gore, I think, and uh, then we pulled it back. We dialed it back a bit after a conversation. <laughs> so yeah, 
important lesson learned definitely talk about your themes with your players um, so that everyone's on the same page and after that I feel like I feel like I've had only good experiences as a GM. There's been a few games that maybe didn't go as well, but I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it was necessarily because I was lacking something as a GM or in experience. It's all been a learning process. Um I threw money in the air and a car appeared. The rules let you. Yes, they did. <laughs> I was trying so hard to not let that happen, but I was like, you know what? It's just the rules say that that happens, so I guess just have your car. <laughs> Very strange. I build a system based on the Shining Force games. It was fun, but very badly balanced. I think as long as it's fun. That's like the main thing, you know, especially if it's a thing you're starting out on. If As long as, you know, it's not something you're making money from. It's a thing that you're just doing for fun. It's, it's, as long as everyone in the group is kind of there for it and nobody minds the bits that are maybe broken, then I think it, it works. We're back. What did you miss? Hello. Welcome back, Jupiter Spire. What did you miss? You missed the creation of the Mimic Boy. There, there, there he is. There is the boy. <laughs> um, I really like him. Notice the, I don't know if you can see me zooming in. There's a B and an A in the eyes because there has to be. Uh, but I want it to be subtle. So it's quite small. But um, I love him. Now we're going to be making a, a PlayStation Mimic be their friend because that's what Nintendo and PlayStation are they're friends <laughs> and then we started talking about uh, GM experiences well we started talking about how old people were when they started playing tabletop games and then I started going on about GM experiences I assume you were GMing the Shining Force system Chris Love it, thank you very much. Okay, I need... So, I've got a circle. I'm happy with how the circle looks in isometric space. I need... I need to flip it up. I need to flip it up with this... This, because I want it open. First GM was Marvel Superheroes by TSR. Oh, cool. That is a game I know literally nothing about, so that I'm intrigued by. Okay, so if I, what if I just, okay, if I do this for a starter, obviously I'm going to have to move the points around a bit, but we want it open slightly. Maybe this is how we think about it. I still want the points to line up, so... Maybe this is maybe this is it. Okay. No, uh, no, that's not it. That's not it. Okay. I think I just need to draw a new circle. So we start the point there then this one's quite open I guess I could make it this this far open in which case I don't really need to think about overlapping too much I could just have it open like straight open so one two three four so this is five squares so one two three four that's where that would go And then it's one, two and a half. Yeah, it's five by five, as it should be. Okay, so one, um, that's one, two and a 
half, I think, is technically that. No, I'm counting. That's double. That's double because I'm counting. I'm counting it like wrong. It's one, two. I think. Oh gosh, my brain. <laughs> it's actually a great system, Marvel superheroes. Um, very of its time, but fun and full of flexible systems. Oh, cool. Yeah, I feel like looking at older systems, some of them it's like, yeah, we wouldn't necessarily play them now, but we needed them in order to get to like the kind of more dynamic systems that we have today. Jupiter Spire. I started with Star Wars Saga, which was D&D 3.5 with Star Wars Code of Paint. Getting on for 11 years now. Ah, so we started at a very similar time. I think I had a year on you, basically. Yeah, like, there's only... I feel like the only system that is, like, old. Not, not, not like, old, old. Actually, yeah. One of the older systems that I still like is Traveller. Like, I like old school Traveller. There is obviously the remake, which I think is better and more accessible to play but I do I'm, I would quite happily play the old Traveller as well which is a nice it's it's like a classic sci-fi system um, two, three, four. is this one is this one too long one two three four no five okay cool Um, yes. The circle is confusing the crap out of me, but I will not be defeated by it. I shall prevail. Okay, and then we gotta figure out the wonkiness of this circle. I think first thing we need to do straighten that though obviously that doesn't work too well because we want to make sure it lines up mm. let's I can figure this out it's just these these look very strange. This is... I'm just gonna... I'm gonna off-road. I'm gonna off-road things. This just looks like it's not in the right place. Traveller, the only system I have played where you can kill yourself in character creation. Exactly. <laughs> There's something weirdly appealing about that to me. The idea that character creation is deadly. Or like, it's one of those systems that you could just play the character creation of. I don't know many systems like that, if I'm honest. And and it's it's kind of like a nice novelty. Okay. Okay. So I think it's getting there. I think I think that's looking a little nicer now. We just have to figure out the the rest of the lines but the circles are the hardest part of this. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my lines are chunky, like I want them. So I think I've got the circles, and then there's this little gear, but other than that, it's kind of like a little a little shape, like it connects to the back with these lines. So if I went like a line here and a line here 
It's looking more PlayStation-esque. I'd love to give Travel a second edition a go sometime. I've played Infinity, which borrows heavily from it, including death by character creation. Though, in that universe, death is more of an inconvenience so long as your cube survives. Oh, interesting. I actually quite like a lot of systems that have permadeath. That might sound weird, but like, um, it's, it's one of the many reasons why I quite like the Exalted universe. I'm going to have a quick swig of tea. Just like the idea that death... You know, you can't just res. It kind of has... It's not like a Dragon Ball Z logic. It kind of means something. Num num num. It might seem harsh, but again, it, you can still keep playing your character in the Exalted Universe. You'd just be like a ghost. <laughs> You have to take your XP, you lose a lot of it, granted, when you convert a character to being from an exalted to a ghost, but... Um, I kind of just like the idea that you're, you're changed by it, you're not brought back to life. Not that I have anything wrong with, you know, resin characters or anything. It depends on the campaign, for sure. But permadeath is intriguing to me. Almost like, yeah, I, the circle is, the circles, well, they're too big or the lines don't come in right. So, which one? Probably that the circle needs to be bigger. I'm going to grab both of them and try and scale them at the same time. Okay, yeah. That's more... That's more like it. There's definitely like an overlap there. Though I will give these lines slightly thinner because they're more of a... Like an inner design. Trying to make resurrection meaningful for some other heroes has been interesting. Death can feel a bit cheap in 5th edition. Which is not a problem, but I just want it to have a cost. Yeah. Exactly. Or a death lord. <laughs> Jupiter Spire, you are going big. <laughs> You're not wrong. But, my gosh. The, the power your exalted would have had and then died for that to have happened. <laughs> it's not out of the question, but I'm killing like a a six dot exalt if I'm making a death lord. <laughs> Maybe even more, but we're going we're going off character sheet in terms of dots, for sure. No, I mean that 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 almost sounds appealing. <laughs> I wanna make the most powerful exalted and then murder them so I can be a ghost a ghost boss. You just could die and come back in this abyssal, right? Well, technically, I mean, you could. It depends what you mean by come back. You could run it, you could certainly run it that way. Um, the way I see the abyssals isn't quite that. It, it's like, um, it's always an interesting topic, thinking about how exaltations and stuff work in, in Exalted. I'm coming at this from second edition. I don't know as much about third, um, so. That's where you know if it's different in third, that might be that might be where we're confused. But in second edition, uh, it's like it's like you the person, you're like you have a soul, and then the exaltation is like DLC for your soul. <laughs> um, it it makes you super powered, um, and the exaltation kind of goes from person to person through the ages. So it's not like the same person necessarily has the same exaltation. It's like all these different souls that have the same DLC and there's like 
you know, maybe maybe DLC is the wrong word. Maybe it's like you're all using the same um, game cartridge. You're all using the same memory card, uh, and it's like not not like the same person, but you've like you've 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 inherited this old memory card. <laughs> I'm doing a terrible job of explaining, but I hope you're still with me. Um, and the abyssals were like a corrupted save file of the solars. That's how it was. So it wasn't like you died and came back as an abyssal. It was the save file itself has been tainted by death. They changed it a bit. Um, it started. It stated that you were the same people reborn into new lives. Ah, oh, okay. That's fair. It honestly gets a bit confusing <laughs> um, with the additions and stuff. Also, this is very much my interpretation. It's one of those systems that has such a, a lore dump that um, it, it, it could be different people play things in different ways. But I know that there's been very significant changes to the lore in 3rd edition, which I think, for the most part, is a good thing. Definitely some things that um, I like, highly recommend starting with 3rd edition despite not knowing as much about it, just because there's just a lot of things yeah, there's a lot of topics in Exalted. It's um, well, for one thing, it's you know, I don't, I feel like third edition. I don't think it could get rid of the colonialism. <laughs> it's very ingrained, so that's that's just one of the the things in that game. But I know it's it's evened out a lot of the other things that could be, um, well, that are definitely kind of problematic in older editions. The first book, the solos were coming back, having been wiped out by the dragon blooded. Okay, cool, we're the same so far. Which was a problem because some of them remembered being betrayed. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, like the core is the same. Um, I find a fascination of it not being the same soul. It's kind of like. What is a soul? <laughs> um. It, for me, it gives the players this uh, plausible deniability, right? So if they wanted their, you know, the, the, the kind of fun thing I like about previous lives in Exalted, especially if you're a solo. You were a solo, you got betrayed, you know, it kind of gives the players the ability to be like, maybe my previous exaltation was, a, you know, a, became a bad person and... I get like this whole redemption arc for them in this new life and some people like to have that as you know you're being reborn like so there is a connection and some people like that degree of separation almost being like it wasn't me it was just the person who had this really cool toy that I now have to play with so yeah it's fascinating I like the idea of the DLC Exalted Game of the Year edition. <laughs> Let's pop that little bit in there. It's yeah. <laughs> I I I love it as it's just I don't think any other world has quite captured my imagination to the point that the Exalted Universe has. It's just really, really got in my brain. I think both could be true. That's the joy of tabletop RPGs. It, yeah, exactly. Like, I 100% I think both interpretations are entirely true and valid. Um, because I could just be overcomplicating things. <laughs> it's, it's not out of the question that I'm just overcomplicating things. It's not like I haven't done that before. Okay, we just need to put the buttons on now. Ooh, oh, I accidentally dragged a different window. Let me just, just pop you back there. It's not move chat. There we go. I need chat there so I can read it. 
so I might just copy this circle since it's at the right angle and everything. Uh, interesting, how are these fit around? So it needs to be considerably smaller than that. So we've got two big buttons that kind of sit in similar places. So that's that. And then we've got the small button. Which is up here for the reset. And then I just need to work on these cartridge places. This cartridge placement, I think. I don't know if I want a disc in here. I think I want to put like a curly tongue. <laughs> a curly tongue. Because why not? Do I want to put a circle up here? I think I do. But... I'm gonna need to just... This looks a little flat, and I'm just going to do that. It was very interesting. They were ramping up to an ending of... Um, they are ramping up to ending the World of Darkness at the same time they released First Edition, First Edition Exalted. Yes, there were some very interesting comparisons between some of the things happening in both stories. Solar showed up around the same time Hunters did, and they had a similar power set. Yeah, the worlds used to be connected, and then they weren't. <laughs> um, I personally prefer them to be different, to not be connected, but there's so many similarities, like especially in the early editions, like Sidereals, I think, are changelings, um, I think. The Lunars are werewolves. Um, abyssals of vampires it's very similar but I like I like the similar but different nature I quite like it to be separate looking at my dusty ps1 on the shelf and you're doing a good job thank you that, that's good to hear <laughs> I think you're right Exa. I think having that extra line in has just been helpful especially getting the circles to sit to sit as they need to. So I need to add a little bit of a an edge, I think, here. And then maybe I want to have this bit. I don't know. Let's do an attempt. So I think I want to have this come out like this. And then we cut this in fairly high up so maybe we just have a line like this okay <laughs> you see the cubes the cubes they're everywhere do I want to just delete that how does it look on the other side it is kind of also on the other side so should be somewhere like that. Um, but let's keep it. There we go, we've got this here. We don't want to fill. We just wanna bring that down. Okay, so that's half of this edge. Hi, Dungeon and Friends! Hello, Fox Spotter! How are you doing? I'm drawing some Mimic game consoles, and we're talking about the Exalted RPG and World of Darkness. <laughs> I'm doing well, thank you. Lunas definitely capture the old fudge moment that werewolves inspire in World of Darkness. Like, a pissed off one is... Uh, of either is not fun to have around. Correct. <laughs> you don't want an angry werewolf. You don't. You don't. You don't want an angry Lunar either. My gosh. 
I have to say this is like a Luna Stan. Uh, you don't want that. You don't need that in your life. That's um That's just it's just a lot of that's just a lot of energy. You're gonna be tired after that. Okay. So I don't want that there. And then it kind of it's got this this bit. This bit. How am I doing this? I mean there's a wheel on this side. And then we'll add some mimic bits. I just want to get the mechanical the mechanical bits in first. So is it it's like connected into the line, yeah. So it needs to come all the way out. I mean that might be like it's not gonna be straight. It's slightly off because it's open. I think this may be a ignore the grid sort of moment because it's just like an open thing. Oh, okay. Well, I don't want to connect that line. I just want them to start from the same place. But if I like commit to an angle, I think it should be the same angle. Yeah. So Chris, you've played you've played third edition Exalted, it sounds like. What is your favorite what Exalt do you play? What is your favorite? I don't think that's a question I've asked before. I've just gone on record as a Luna Stan. <laughs> and I think that'll be the case in whatever edition. Because I'm a sucker for shapeshifters, as we all know. Oh, yes, I've turned my guides off. I was like, where is it gone? But we want it to be about the same thickness. Love your solo. That is fair. You gotta have some appreciation for the Sun Kings. They are the heroes of the story for a reason. <laughs> He was a rogue turned hero and just wanted to make the world better. I think that's another fun thing in Exalted that it's so easy to kind of find something you want to fix because the world is so broken. <laughs> there are lots of things for you to come in and be like, I can, this is a part, this, this, this could be easier for people and I'm going to be the one to fix it. You can make very heroic characters, I think. Like, there's a tangible thing you can fix. So, I don't know if I need... this. I think it's almost like this is connected into there. I don't know, I don't really like that. I might just leave it like that and have the fill in. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. How has the stream been so far? It's been good. So let's have a look. I have been working on these for the uh, community challenge that we do monthly in the Discord. We have the retro theme this month. Uh, and I have done this Game Boy. This Mimic Boy earlier. We finished this. I love them. <laughs> I love their little tongue. Um, I'm very happy with this. Now we're working on a PlayStation. So I'm just trying to get this lid. This lid to work. So I'm just looking at this a lot. Maybe I need to just get that line in in there. Such a cute concept. Thank you. 
Maybe I just need to move it back so that's not in line. Maybe that's what my problem is. Maybe this this shouldn't be lined up like it currently is. Maybe it's this line that should be like flush with it. Yeah, that is right. Only I've deleted that part of the line. Can I get it back? <laughs> Let's find out. Let's find out how many moves I can press backspace to. Aha! I got it back. Okay. Magic. Let's pop you here. I think that's what we want. Got to turn this back on. And then we've just got to connect it. Connect it in. Which, yeah, I mean, it doesn't need to be here. So a cast's a thing in 3rd edition, Exalted. I believe so. You know, there is, there is a lot of changes. Who knows? In previous edition, the cast is like the closest thing to a, a class, I would say. So like you have a zenith, they're like the priests. And you have a, like a, a knight a knight class that's um that's like a rogue and you know you don't have to fit into that archetype it's just kind of um it's very it's very broad like you can put like lots of dots everywhere you like if you're a rogue you you aren't necessarily uh stuck as being a very ar archetypal rogue you could be a rogue and play very much against type if you wanted to if that was part of your character concept. Okay. I mean, it looks a bit better now. I also feel like I need to grab all of these lines and make some sort of fill. Also, this is just a little too flat, isn't it? I just need to get rid of these extra points that I made. Ah! Okay, well, that's not gonna happen. Gonna have to figure it out. These cursed handles. Make a fill so that I can not in that color though. Let's just put the white in. And that way I can stop seeing the lines behind it for a second. Maybe do the same with these. Connect this up. That way I can give it a fill. the disc I'm just gonna extend this one out because that way I know it's hidden Uh, 
They were, and I was knight. I was a lot more edgelordy back then. <laughs> hey, you can have an you can certainly have an, a non edgelord knight cast, but there ain't nothing wrong with a bit of edge. <laughs> Every now and again, it's nice to dabble. Okay, so I need to figure out the angle of this one. Which I will, I know that that's not a good shape. It's just going to be slightly visible. So this is... it needs to come in because... this side it's about halfway so we want to just pop that in okay what I'm thinking I'm reviewing the situation if I pull this all the way back so it's behind the others and I get rid of this bottom line on this shape because obviously it's a bit thicker and then we can taper it in slightly. So that we can have the thicker line kind of come out here. Oh, not that much, just a little. Come over here and we'll taper this one just a teeny bit more. There we go. Okay, gradually there. Actually, that is a great question for folks. Who was your first tabletop character you ever made? And how different are they to your most recent one? Well, <laughs> we want to talk about Edge. <laughs> My first character was evil. <laughs> 100% neutral evil. <laughs> they were... They were not nice. Um, it was quite a while ago. Uh, she was named after the an Egyptian goddess. That also isn't a great name these days, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to call her Ice for the the sake of of the topic. But yeah, named after the Egyptian goddess. She was a changeling fighter. And uh, I love her, but my god, edge, so much edge. Um, she just had this, she had this backstory of um, like, um, of like murdered parents. And eventually, I think, I don't know what, I don't know what happened. I can't, I can't say this was a long time ago. Just... Eventually she like amassed a goblin army and just decided that's it, I'm goblin queen now. <laughs> I'm gonna go raid people with goblins. That's my thing now. So my first character was a goblin queen, changeling, fighter. And my current one, <laughs> if we're going with the most recently played character, my current character is Aero. Um, full name Erebus he's a shifter uh, a shifter sorcerer so the, the, the shape shifting thing has never changed that's always been the constant here uh, he's a puppy basically a very excitable very loving puppy and um, just wants to be friends with everyone very cute um, does lean on the martial side though because I've neglected to say I did say sorcerer I actually meant sorcerer barbarian <laughs> I've gone for the multi-class for the first time and uh, yeah I would say disposition 
absolute opposite. Um, Ice was very serious, um, didn't have any sort of fun, and Arrow is nothing but giggles and sunshine, and I love him. <laughs> um, did she get the hair and the David Bowie joke? <laughs> oh, I wish. No. Um, I just had like... Oh, something I did like. She had this very cool armor that could disappear and reappear at will. So I could like walk around in just like effectively what was sports gear. And then whenever a combat started, uh, I could have full plate. It was so so jammy and I loved it uh I played Vampire the Masquerade first oh that's a very interesting first tabletop game and you had a vampire called Tobias don't fully remember what he was didn't get to play the game for too long that's really fun most people I know start on some sort of D&D &D, so starting on that starting on vampire oh my gosh <laughs> Did you come from, like, the video game background? So you were already sort of aware of how it worked? Because it's a very complicated system for a first system. So that's pretty good. That's pretty impressive. At least I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's kind of, like, kind, of, kind of a complicated one for the first game. Nope, I had no clue. Oh my gosh. <laughs> My friends were playing it and you joined. Okay, good. I'm glad you had some people to help guide you on that. That's pretty wild as a as a first game. But I mean, once you've done that, you're prepared for any system. <laughs> uh, I technically played a Star Wars campaign, but it was when I was in secondary school, so I remember very little. So I think of Zuzu as my first character, who was a gnome barbarian who tried to solve puzzles by hitting things with an axe. <laughs> That's the best way of solving a puzzle, right? Okay, so I need to have like a little square for the back. So when I have, when I go to colour it, I want to make sure that this space is filled in. So I'm just going to turn that there and then I'm going to just... I'm not going to make it curly. That's not what I wanted. Also, where are my paths gone, Illustrator? Why do you hide them from me? Show edges, please. Thank you very much. You can't keep doing this to me, Illustrator. You can't. It's not fair. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to try and fit the wheel in. Like, I feel like the wheel should go in. I have a current Gnome Barbarian. She's actually my favourite. Gnome Barbarian is a great combo, in my opinion. It's it's It seems like a just a fun, silly time. My first character was in Marvel Super Heroes. I played an energy manipulator who ended up being the de facto leader of our bunch of failing upwards teens. Oh, that's cool. An energy manipulator. So, like... Energy as in like um, like laser beams sort of energy or like human energy. <laughs> I'm trying to be like, is it more like cyborg or cyclops or rogue is how I'm, I'm trying to think of it. I'm leaning more towards like a cyclops thing, but without the eyes. Turned energy into other types of energy. Ah, okay. So you're like a converter. That's cool. And while it was one or uh, while it was a one-off, my most recent character was a goat. Yes, <laughs> who wanted to crash a party and reenact Die Hard. Oh gosh, goat crashes. Goat crashes is a fantastic one-page RPG. Highly recommend. It's very silly. I didn't include that. Technically, I guess my recent character was a goat who wanted to crash a party. And drink fizzy wine. <laughs> I didn't include it because it was a it was a one off. But um, yeah, technically, I guess my last character was a goat. Known barbarians are the best. She lives for food and naps, and is actually incredibly stupid. <laughs> Her name is Pipkin. Oh, I like the sound of Pipkin. 
She sounds like a good time. She sounds very cute. I feel like I need a bit of something in here as well. Like, not much. I just want some lines, some tapered lines in here. Like, maybe I don't want it on this side, actually. I just want it on here. I'm gonna give it a little taper. Yeah, just to kind of give a sense of depth. So Voss in Star Wars was a noble. He tried to politely solve problems in a very gun-ho way. He was on his way to being a crime lord because of a lack of prestige class options. Ah, interesting. A cry a polite crime lord. <laughs> Gonna look for a bit, got work to do. No worries, Fox but Have a good look, and I hope that uh, the stream makes for a good background noise for you. I'm looking at the time and I actually think it's a good time for a break because I have just missed it. So I will we'll go on a break and then we'll finish this off. And I think we'll call the stream there then. So we'll be going for at least another hour, maybe an hour and a half. So if you need a drink or a stretch or you need to do a small, a small little chore like wash up a plate or put a laundry on, it's a good time to do that because I am going to be gone for 10 minutes. So I will see you all in 10 minutes time.
I'm back. I was a bit late. I apologize. My partner had awoken. And I was I was saying hi. Okay, so we have a basic PlayStation-esque shape. We can add mimic things to it now. Like eyes and tongues. So actually that should be like this way around, for sure. Going straight in with the cat eye again. The buttons obviously have to be eyes. Ah, but I hope everybody else had a good break. I can see Pet Mimic Bot enjoyed the conversation that we just had so much that it's asked the question that we'd already have answered. <laughs> But never mind. Then maybe we'll have this one be rounder. It's just this this awkward third eye. There we go, just sitting there. Just sitting there! I mean, even just adding the eyes, it looks more alive. <laughs> I need to jump off, I'm afraid, get things set up for this afternoon. Have an amazing rest of your stream. Thank you for joining, Chris. Have a good stream later. Uh, let me give you a shout out. Chris will be on at uh, in an hour and a half's time on some of the heroes Chris is the DM um, of that wonderful channel with some wonderful people who play a wonderful game highly recommend checking them out if you're about later I don't think I'll be streaming long enough to give them a raid but I recommend Ah, no problem, Chris. Have a great rest of your day. Okay. Tongue. I want the tongue to be cold in this, like this. Like, I need to figure out the shape, but I'm going to use the hand tool to figure something out. Maybe like this. Hmm. Um, on. Nope, not quite. Okay, that's a fair starting place. We can we can work with this. We can fix that up. So we're gonna need that to be quite thick anyway. I'm gonna change the layer color again because dark blue worked when I had everything else going on but now that I don't have the guides on it's actually quite hard to see so let's work on this curve but it's gonna be underneath the little circle that's where we need to keep it so we want to bring this out A spiral. It's almost there. I just need to redo that with less points so it's a bit smoother. Same with the ending here. I want the end to be in the centre. I 
feel like I want the tongue to be slightly thicker as well. Have a good luck, Jupiter Spire. Thank you for joining. I hope you have a good rest of your day. I like the idea that the tongue is just spinning. <laughs> I don't know what practical use that has. But I think it will be fun. It feels like everyone's disappearing for lunchtime. I'm pretty hungry. I should I'm definitely gonna have lunch after the stream. I haven't decided what I want today. Other people have food. What are they currently eating? Give me some ideas. a little bit. Not eating, sadly. Ah. There's always next time. I'll definitely ask about food again. It's one of my favourite topics. <laughs> there we go, that's not too bad. Hit save, and I'm going to outline the stroke because sometimes that helps see sort of how everything is overlapping. Cool, yeah, we've got this strangeness happening here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Copy the way that curve is, roughly. It will, I'm going to collapse the, the tongue shape in on itself. So that we've got like a more solid shape to work with. I'm going to get rid of all these extra bits that we don't need. And then I can come back here and get that curve. Maybe I'll get rid of the circle in the middle. We'll just have this. Or maybe, maybe I didn't want that. Maybe I didn't want that one. Maybe I want this line to follow on, yeah, that looks better. Definitely needs to fold in on itself. a sandwich but also had a treat of a sweet style scotch egg with a cream egg what 
<laughs> what are you eating there, Penguin Queen? It sounds amazing. A sweet style scotch egg. So I'm assuming no meat. It's a cream egg surrounded in brownie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's decadent. A cream egg surrounded in brownie. Oh my. I want it. That sounds amazing. Yeah, now I don't want this. Now it's that point that's bothering me. Cut it into four because it's so... Okay, this makes sense to me. I was wondering, I was like, how could you eat one of those in, like, just, just one of them? That sounds a, that sounds like a lot. <laughs> Cutting into, into four is uh, a good shout. Okay, yeah, that line's almost there. I just need this to have a curve now. And this looks a bit tight, so. Let's bring that out a bit. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of the circle. I think now that the tongue's in there, it'd be weird doesn't quite line up as much as I want it to. Urgh. We'll make you work, tongue. If it's the last thing I do, we'll make you work. Oh, I hope it's not, because that would be a very weird and ominous last thing. <laughs> Almost as if the PlayStation would eat me. circle as much as I can. Come in. That's what did I say something that sets up a that's what she said. Uh oh. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I'm gonna make you work, tongue. I'm 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 so in the in the in the drawing. I, I wasn't thinking of the out of context applications of that sentence. <laughs> And I'm basically feel like I'm just redrawing this now, but that's okay. I want to get the curve as 
nice as I can. It's a bit of a complex one. I'm almost there. I've just got to work on the end now. This bit. This bit needs a bit of a, it's a bit of TLC. Nope, you stay where you are. I said stay where you are, circle. I don't want to have to tell you again. There we are. I never wanna... Hmm. How do I feel about that? I feel like I'll feel a bit better if that line isn't there. But I don't want to... That just feels like cheating. I almost feel like this part needs to be all the way over here. To like give it a good old balance. So you're going to bow out. Catch you next time. No worries, Exile. Thank you for joining. Have a good rest of your day. And have a good week. And I shall see you next time. I'll continue trying to get this tongue to work. <laughs> this may be not enough points going on scenario. I may have gotten rid of too many. That's a bit better, I think. A bit better. It's almost there, I think. this curve. No, no, you stay where you are. I just want to move this handle. of the tongue as well. I imagine that that's curved. I 
like it's kind of curved in on itself almost round and then comes back again like maybe here Add to the spinniness of the tongue. Okay, I think it's sufficiently trippy. <laughs> Do like it. Need some teeth. Need some teeth here now. So I think what I'm going to want, before I just go ahead and do it, is if I come in and I find a circle, I can use it as a guide as to how these teeth will look. why that went red. I don't know when that went red. I think I clicked the wrong colour. Kind of almost there, not quite. What if I just pop this back? That's more of what I need to be thinking of. This kind of shape. Yeah, that looks like that works a bit better. I'm going to try and keep it uh, a little bit like kind of almost following this line just off a bit. Okay, and then yeah, you have the changeover bit here. the outside becomes the inside. Do I want this to be thinner? I think I do. Just a little bit. Oh, and now I'm going to come in. I might just add like a tiny bit of curve. Just to make them look a little bit rounder. Like a little bit 
Like they've got a bit more of depth. That works. I like the idea that the teeth just kind of slot into the beginning of the disk drive when it's closed. So when you open the PlayStation, it just kind of grabs your hand. <laughs> I shan't because it does weird things to the lines. Unless I do that. Okay. Well, that's weird. What if I did this? Where are you going? There we go. Yeah, the line doesn't go weird then. done weird things. Don't do weird things to my lines. Okay. I'll just have to grab it like this, make a new circle. So I'm gonna need that circle for the fill. Narrowly avoiding biting its own tongue. <laughs> just like the rest of us. <laughs> I don't know if it's just me. Bite my tongue more than I probably should. On accident. Okay. Got some eyes. We've got some teeth. We've got the tongue. I need some arms or some hands maybe made out of wire and memory cards so we've got to put those slots in now we've left some space for them it's because i need to do it at a slightly different thickness so Kind of like a square and then the two slots are separate, so I'm gonna just get rid of the middle line for the time being. Make the squares. Go. 
start the middle bit. We got another square with a line separating those memory cards. so slight kind of dip in for the memory card even smaller than that let's come in like so Mimic Bud asked a question. What is your favourite part about playing tabletop or video games? I usually say the social element. It just lets me hang out with my friends. And I like that. Okay, so I don't want to do the these three bits because I definitely want to have the thingy plugged in, so... I just need to work on extending that out. The other side I might put a memory card in as well though. I don't need it in slot two. So we can do both of those. I shall group that together. I'm going to duplicate it over and then we'll get rid of this bit because we don't need that. I want to have a memory card. So do I want the memory card to be one or two? Probably more like one and a half actually. So what I might do is I'm just going to duplicate this line out. So I can get the angle. Let's go for two for now. And it would be better if I just copied that over because then I don't have to figure out the length of that line. Then I can move the shape up here. And down here. How much does the memory card stick out? A fair bit, but probably not as much as I have it, so. I have to do them separately though, otherwise my line's not gonna do its thing. Oh, I can't really, or I'll lose the angle. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. This might just be slightly off, but I'm okay with that. It's how it's gonna go. The creative escapism. It helps scratch the creative itch of your brain. That's fair. It's a good creative outlook for sure. I like it for that too. And it's nice because it's like a group project, but there's no... Um, like... What am I trying to say? 
it's a group project, but it's not for anything, I guess. So you can just kind of enjoy being silly. So now that I've spent all that time doing that I actually realize I want this to be curved so let's try that again The lines are a bit thin. It should probably be thick. It still looks like it's sticking out like a tiny bit too much as well. Let's grab it. Okay, and I'm gonna go on another break. So if you need a drink or you need a stretch, it's a good time to do that because I need a drink. Um, I'm going to be 10 minutes, so I will see you all in 10.
Hello! I'm back from my break. I apologize for quite a sudden break there. My partner was back with food and I needed to help. And it was uh, on the hour anyway, so it was kind of all worked out. Got a nice memory card in there. That's a much better length. Uh, and it should have like a... It doesn't need a label, I guess. I might put a label on it anyway. And then I want to have some like wiry hands. But before the break, we were talking about reasons to like playing tabletop games. Uh, and Jupiter Spire, you was talking about creative escapism. Like, there's no deadline or fail state. Things can go wrong and you're not being graded on it, which is nice. Yeah, it's like... It's, yeah, it's just for fun. And I think that's important. Like, I think if every cre if you like kind of, as you say, graded yourself on everything, uh, it just gets a bit too stressful. It's nice to have something creative where you can turn your brain off and go, it's okay if this doesn't work. This doesn't have to work 100% of the time. label. And the wires. So I'm going to need a similar shape actually for the, the start of the controller. So what I might do is just come in and Grab everything I need. These. And duplicate it down. And under. Maybe we'll bring this up slightly because there is a bit of a gap and the memory card is slightly thinner. So we can maybe just bring this up. That was in response to your group project comment. Ah, I see. Yes, that makes sense talking about grades and stuff then. 
there's a fill on that. That shouldn't be the case. It's very odd. Oh, it's because that line connected it. I see. Okay. I think it's still working despite how weird that is. I might give this like the slightest curve. Like that. And then if I come in here, because this is going to need that too, because of that fill. Give it an itty bitty curve. Maybe too much of a curve. Not itty bitty enough. Yeah, because I think there is, you can to some degree have like a failure state in a tabletop RPG. I mean, if the group, if the if the party dies, <laughs> um, or you know you don't achieve your goals, I guess that would be a failure state. But it's it doesn't matter. It's inconsequential, right? Like you can always reset if uh, that's a problem. So I want. I want like a wire to be like a hand, kind of like this, but I don't know if if that's what I want. I don't know if I want it to kind of come round a bit. I want it to be like kind of like it's waving. I kind of like that wave. <laughs> But I, I think I want to follow the isometric padding a bit more. So we got a thumb, fingers, come in, and then we follow this line out. We don't have to do that, but I feel like if I do do that, I'll get a, a nicer, a more pleasing shape in the end. Like a nice little hand. <laughs> I don't think I need a second one. I could put a second one in, but I don't think I'm going to. Okay. wire up. Ooh, my stomach growled then. <laughs> Don't know if it came out on the mic. I apologize if it did. I haven't had lunch yet and my partner's only come back with food recently. I ran out of snacks after eating all the fruit. <laughs> Soon. Soon I shall snack on biscuits. And I will have an actual lunch as well. <laughs> we were talking about that. I could have a sandwich. I could just have some noodles. I like this. This actually works really nicely for me. <laughs> okay, I might try and get some colour in now. Uh, yeah, it's not like you have um, some eternal pressure unless you stream your game. If there's a TPK, 
you can still talk through that and find a way to move on while having fun. Uh, it doesn't have to be the end. Yeah, like unless you stream something, because that, well, then it's more of a you know not like a job, but you're you're trying to present it as something. You know, it's not it's not just a for funsy thing anymore. It's kind of got more of a like a work behind it. Um, but if you TPK in a private game, for sure, if, if nobody is happy about it, just reset the combat. Like, you don't, it doesn't need to be that way. I always find that story consistency, while is fun, and it's great when things happen organically, it's not impo as important of, you know, just being happy with the game. In my opinion. In my opinion. I'm quite happy to reset the entire thing <laughs> if I have to it's a product yes thank you stream stream games are a product so you likely wouldn't want to you know people follow that external you have an audience you probably wouldn't want to do a hard reset I'm gonna have a swig of tea Num num num. Okay, colours. Let's get some colours going. Now I'm thinking purple. We didn't do purple for the other one. That means I'm doing purple for this one. And I think everything has got a line. Oh, not everything does. Okay. want the purple. Ah, oh, it's this. This is the one thing. We'll give it all purple lines. Just notice if Mimic Point's gone, yes, I'm no longer an affiliate. Uh, you can still do everything that you could do before, but with commands. Uh, which I need to write down somewhere, I just haven't gotten around to. It's a very new thing. So if you wanted to make hearts or sparkles, it's exclamation point love or exclamation point sparkle or sparkles, I'm not sure. <laughs> exclamation point hydrate reminds me to hydrate. But uh, yeah, I left the affiliate program because I wanted to uh, expand. I wanted to expand on, on my streaming. I might stream in other places. I just felt like I needed the freedom. Unfortunately, that makes mimic points go. But I, in in fairness, I didn't really do much with them. <laughs> okay, so now I want this to be like this. So yeah, I think that would also need to be there. I want this one to be on the outside, this one to be on the inside, and then with this little wheel, make it a bit two-toned as well. I think that works, and then if I grab this line. I might need to move it to another point of the thing, but we'll give this a fill. No, oh, that's working. Good. Doesn't mean you don't have subscribers anymore. It does. No money through Twitch. I would like to start a Kofi membership or a Patreon soon. And quite frankly, I don't think Twitch offers enough. And I don't like asking for subscribers. I don't want 
people to subscribe. If they had to subscribe on one, I wouldn't want it to be Twitch, basically. So that was my that was another reason. Like I ha I gave this a, a bit of a thought, and I think since I want I'm planning on starting maybe other ways of being supported. Uh, I don't think it's fair to ask people to support me on multiple platforms, especially when there's a platform that isn't giving me a, a good deal, in my opinion. And I think that's what the Twitch program is. But, you know, things like that can change. Uh, so maybe, maybe I'll go back on it eventually. But uh, I think how it works is the current subscription will... The emotes are still here for a little bit longer. But then once that runs out, the subscriptions will be gone. So you should still have access if you are a sub for the time being. But it will just run out. we go I don't think oh no that wasn't what I wanted let's grab this and lock it so I can just fill that yeah that's better or maybe this should match the tongue color I'm thinking just pink I think the tongue should be pink <laughs> and then the buttons so they're just grey so I could do them like this and I kind of want to give maybe like a blue or yellow. I do feel like it needs like a third colour in here. Blue's okay. Maybe green. I'm liking the green, so I'm going to keep it green. That's fair. Um, rip my 14th month streak. <laughs> yep. I've just ended it unceremoniously. But it still says it if you hover over your first. So, um, yeah. Still have 14 months. Which, thank you, by the way. That's ridiculous. Look forward to supporting you elsewhere. I'm sure you'll find it if I set it up. <laughs> I can't tell you how to send me. Yeah, I just... Just a cage of don't th I just didn't I just don't think it's worth it and if I don't think it's worth it it just doesn't seem right to ask other people to think it's worth it if that makes sense there we go I'm gonna pop that in and then this one needs to be light. We need to colour the memory cards as well. I actually think in terms of adding some depth, I want this to be darker. Oh, not all of it. Not all of it. This one will be lighter. And then this part will be darker. And then I'm going to use the green on the label as well. Uh, so we need this. And then this side is 
light and then I might just go straight purple to colour that in there on the stack. Do I want that white or do I want that to be like a blue? just in the spirit of the PlayStation should probably be the same. Exactly, integrity is important and I really respect sticking to it. Well, thank you. It's not like, I'm not trying to do like a huge, you know, anti-Twitch thing, otherwise I wouldn't be streaming. <laughs> I think it's just, yeah, for me, because I have, I know I have these plans. I don't want, you know, we're in a cost of living crisis. I don't want to encourage the spending of money that I know I'm not going to make worthwhile. Because some people do a lot of things with channel points and a lot of things for their subscribers and 100% it's worth it. So it's not the case on every Twitch channel by all means. Um, I was just evaluating how I do things and I don't. I just think because I'm going to be my my energy is going to be spent elsewhere that it makes sense to just kind of if i'm gonna ask for a subscription that uh, my subscription be just one as opposed to many and it be something that i really focus my energy on so it's worth it i'm gonna come in with this wheel actually I'm going to keep it two-tone, but I'm going to give this side a bit of a dark edge. Same with this. Same with the back. Same with that. So I don't know if that would actually be... No, that one would be that. This would be this. Pretty sure that that's how this will go. I didn't like that at first, but I think that's gonna be better now. Oh, they look so cute. <laughs> I just have a few highlights to do, I think, in the eyes. Oh, ooh, ooh, maybe I can do like some controller bits for the eyes like I did before. Okay. Now what I'm thinking is I can make this shape and put this in the eye. I'm going to use free transform, I think, to try and get the angle a bit better. Put the guides on again. I can use them. I should use them. in there. Either that or we put these, instead of at the top, we put them at the bottom. And we give them sort of the colours of the button. We just have our, our usual top shine going on up here. Yeah, this might work. Might have to do something else with the small one. 
I might put a little cross in it like I did for the others. Maybe a gradient. Okay, coming in. So let me turn my guides on. Coming out. So red, pink, blue, green. Uh, red, pink, blue, green. Instead of circles, maybe I want to do the shapes. I mean, this would still be a circle. We want it to be more of a line. So maybe do that. need to be smaller but I'll resize it once I'm happy with everything. Square. It's gonna look a bit like a rectangle. the guides in a second I think to make that a bit better and then X yeah I think that'll that'll be nice so that's more reminiscent of PlayStation Guides on. Let's make this square better. There we go. that thick. Okay. Hmm. Maybe I want to line them up like as a totem. Which the green one will certainly uh, not look as good with that. I might have to change the eye colour, but I don't mind that. I think it would be better to just do a circle. Taking the angle off if it's just going to be in the eye. I don't think it would be as necessary. Give this a group. Yeah, Mimic Bot asked another question. What was the last tabletop game you played? The last one I played was Goat Crashers. <laughs> which is a one-page tabletop RPG by Grant Howitt, I think. 
Howitt Hewitt. Where you're a bunch of goats trying to get into a fancy party. It's very fun. It's very silly. Yeah, okay, I like that. I'm glad because it took a while to set up. Though I think I want to change the green. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Either way, it's kind of hard to to make out, but the consistency, keep it that green. We can put it in this eye as well. Make the eye yellow. still got a green eye there yeah I'm happy with with the way the eyes look I don't I usually go a lot shinier but considering I've gone quite minimal I think it works okay so I need to get some some juice on this tongue <laughs> need to make it shiny slimy tongue then I'm gonna grab these big ones and I'm gonna give it a taper Get rid of that. It took so long to draw. We need that. Do I need this? I don't think I need this. I think it needs a gradient. Circular gradient. it lighter in the middle. And then a gradient on this one as well. like this but maybe if I follow the line and get the gradient exactly as I want it so yeah I don't want it to be quite as dark so let's pull that out just adds a little something, I think. And 
then I'm going to expand that live paint so I can grab just the background of the disc and put a gradient on that too. I'm going to just come in with this circle because I feel like I can make this circle better. just needs to be like that. Yeah, just a little bit need to. And what colour should be in the back for this? So I'm going to make sure everything's unlocked. I think it is. Try and move this now that we don't need the grid, so it's a bit center. And it's got a color behind it. Let's go with the cyan. Cyan work. Maybe a bit lighter. Yeah. I think we're done! I think we're done with our PlayStation friend. What do people think? I am pretty happy with it. Yeah. Okay, let's take stock of what we've done today. I love them. Ah, oh, thank you, Penguin Queen. <laughs> we have two retro mimics for our theme. If you feel like uh, doing something for the theme yourself, please come into the Discord. I love to see the art or whatever you create. Ta da! It's love. <laughs> Gotta show love. But we have two retro mimics. We have the mimic boy. With their teeth on the screen and some hands. And we have the play mimic. <laughs> and those are gonna be what I call them. And I shan't change my mind. But I think they both came out really cute. Um, and it was a fun, a nice fun experiment for, um, for isometric art as well, since I haven't done a huge amount of it. So that was a good challenge. Let's move them closer so that we can get a bit more in there. Let's appreciate both of them at the same time. There we go. Two more images, two more mimics unlocked. It kind of makes me want to do like a whole mimic game console series. I think that could be really fun. So maybe I'll do some others at some other point, we'll see. I have a lot of projects right now. <laughs> I don't need any more. Okay. That sounds great. It does sound great. I don't know what I would do with them, but it does sound great. Okay, do you know what? I said I wasn't going to be running until three, but who, you know, I did, apparently. So, um, let's go raid some of the heroes. Since I think they are currently online and they should be starting soon. Um, some of the heroes play tabletop RPGs. They're currently playing 
I believe, a Dungeons and Dragons campaign with uh, Chris as the DM. They're a very, very cool bunch of people, and I enjoy listening to their stories. I highly recommend sticking around for the raid. Some other heroes. Raid has been set. Okay, so please let them know where you have come from with this raid message. Uh, with the love hearts. Here we go. Thank you for joining me today. It's been a lot of fun. I should be next streaming, I think, the 28th. So Tuesday the 28th at 7am BST time now. And yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, but have a good rest of your weekend and have a good rest of your week. It's been fun hanging out with everyone today. And I will see you all next time. Until then, take care. Bye.